after this. So um, good morning and afternoon, everybody. Um, Kim and I are very excited about presenting this class. We're both very passionate about um, essential oils. Um, I unfortunately didn't have them in my life during pregnancy, but Kim certainly did. Um, so we're both gonna share our experiences and our knowledge. So firstly, we have a disclaimer because we have to do these things. So the information presented in this workshop is for educational purposes only. Products discussed are here not to intend to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent diseases, any disease. The information in this workshop is not intended to be substituted for professional medical advice. If you are pregnant, breastfeeding, taking medication, or have a medical condition, you should consult your, doc, your health professional before using these products for yourself on children or clients. So there you go, something that we have to do and say. So what are we gonna to cover today? So today we're going things that you need to know before using essential oils during pregnancy, labor, and with babies. Um, which essential oils can you and can't you use? Uh, chemicals to avoid, and some great natural products for you and your baby. Okay, so who are we? Um, well, this is myself and Kim, quite a lovely photo of us actually. I should uh, keep that one as my um, profile picture, I think, Kim. Um, so anyway, who are we? We're both um, oil enthusiasts, we're educators, um, we love essential oils. I'll tell you a little bit about myself and then Kim can tell you about her. Um, I was introduced to Young Living six years ago, so unfortunately I didn't have these when my kids were babies. Um, I had had quite a lot of hormonal issues myself. I was unaware of the chemicals in our home and the effects that they were having on myself and my health and my children. Um, but on this journey, I've become very passionate about educating women and epigenetics. So knowing that um, what my mum or my grandmother come into contact with not only was affecting her health and the health of um, her children, but also her unborn grandchildren as well. So. You know, we all, once we know better, we do better. And the more people that we can get this message across to, the better. And I have two beautiful girls and I want them to have a different journey health-wise from me. So that's why I'm very passionate about learning and then sharing this information. So um, over to Kim. All right, so this is me when I was pregnant. And uh, I was lucky enough to, basically both of my girls who are now 11 and nine have pretty well been essential oil babies since they were born. I, I originally got introduced to natural products because I was on a fertility journey. So I'm very passionate like Kylie in as far as educating women around the endocrine disrupting chemicals that are found in a lot of products and how they mess with our hormones because that was a huge impact on my life and my ability to fall pregnant. And anyway, I went down the journey of choosing to have home births and uh, while I was pregnant, I was really worried that my midwife actually wasn't going to get there in time and she wasn't going to be there. And so I started to have not, you know, like a huge panic, but I started to ask lots of questions about birth and, you know, having natural things on hand. And, and she gave me a book on, you know, alternatives for childbirth. And so I learned a lot about homeopathy and a lot about aromatherapy. And I started making like a shopping list of stuff to actually have while, like during my birth. And, um, and that was how I started ordering essential oils. My mother-in-law was in, like she was already using Young Living Essential Oils and I didn't want to go down that membership kind of track. I just wanted to get the oils so that I could have them on hand. I, I, I call myself pregnant mumzilla. A lot of people when um, they're in the lead up to their wedding, they become bridezilla. Well, I didn't have that. I was really calm during my lead up to my wedding. But when I was pregnant, I literally went through every room in my house, my laundry, my kitchen, my bathroom, and I threw out all the products that had any toxic ingredients in them. I remember my husband at the time said to me, what are we going to clean with? And I said, uh, bicarb, vinegar, water, <laughs> like, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, so long as, um, you know, there's no chemicals and, you know, we just need to make sure that we get rid of all those chemicals. I had this plan for my home birth. I was going to have this beautiful water birth. We were going to blow up this the pool. We were going to have candles, gentle music, essential oils going in the diffuser. It was this, you know, amazing plan. Anyway, um, with my eldest, I actually had her in 10 minutes. And funnily enough, I didn't even have her at home. Um, I, you know, she was, uh, you know, born with just the midwife and, um, and my husband in the room. But I happened to go uh, and get a check. And while I was having that check, they like 
I basically had the baby. But with my second, um, once again, it was quite quick. I had quick births both times that I had um, children, but I knew a lot more about essential oils because while I was on maternity leave, I... I was so passionate about using these oils that my midwife, she was the one who encouraged me to go and study aromatherapy because she said, wow, you seem to know so much about this. You've learned so much about it. You should go and, and study. And, um, and that's basically how I went and learnt about aromatherapy and in particular about using them with children and babies and during pregnancy. And it was really concerning to me because when I first started, there was all kinds of things on the internet and as there is today, uh, and a lot of it was really um you know wrong information and it was giving women contradictory advice you'd say one thing over here that would say essential oils are toxic and they're terrible and over here you'd say the um some other information which was like oh they're all safe and i thought there's got to be some common ground here like where is um you know, where's the research? Where's the people who are giving correct information? So when I studied aromatherapy, uh, which was oh, close to nine, ten years ago now, um, I wanted to be able to educate women so that they, to reduce that fear factor, I guess, because you jump online and you see this massive stuff that scares you and then you see all this other stuff saying, yes, yeah, slather clove oil all over your teething baby, all of this kind of stuff. And I thought there's got to be somewhere in the middle. And so that's what this workshop is all about. This workshop is about, I guess, giving you the confidence to go out and use essential oils safely, but you know exactly what ones to use and, you know, I guess what ones not to use. So... Anyway, that's me and my story. So if you haven't used essential oils before and you're not really sure what they are, basically they're steam distilled. So the true sense of an essential oil is that it has to be steam distilled, uh, which basically means cooking it up in a big cooker, the steam rises, they cool it down, and the essential oil is that layer of oil that sits on top of the... Um, the water. Volatile, I mean, it was funny, even this morning I had someone contact me and they said, volatile, does that mean that they catch on fire? And I say, volatile just means evaporate. So if you leave the lid of your essential oil bottle off for a period of time, you'll notice it will actually evaporate. And, um, and that's why when you open the lid, say peppermint or something like that, you can smell it on the other side of the room. So essential oils are aromatic plants. So this plant itself has to have some kind of an aroma. If the plant doesn't have an aroma, then obviously it can't make an essential oil. But they come from shrubs, flowers, trees, roots, bark, seeds. They have to be cultivated under specific conditions. And this is why quality really does matter. Um, you know, if you um, are buying your essential oils from a company who's using herbicides and pesticides, then all of those chemicals are actually going to have got onto the plant. And when they are steam distilled and they become a much more concentrated version of that plant, then you're going to find that all those chemicals are actually going to be concentrated in the essential oil. And that's the last thing we want to be using when we're, you know, we're trying to be safe and, and create this beautiful environment for our babies and, you know, um, while we're pregnant and we certainly don't want to be having those nasty chemicals in our essential oils or, or especially put on our bodies. Um, they need to be distilled in the right way. This was something that I really learned and took on board from my essential oil, my aromatherapy training was that you know, I would hear essential oil companies say, oh, we can distill our lavender in 15 minutes. And I thought, wow, that's super quick. And I used to think that was a good thing. But then I learned that a lot of the therapeutic qualities of essential oils don't actually get released by the plants until a certain time. And every plant is different during the distillation process. So for some lavenders, it may be closer to two hours that the, um, the good constituents that we want in our lavender oil actually get released from the plant so you know 15 minutes you might get a nice smelling oil that's going to make your soap smell nice and things like that but you're certainly not going to get an oil that's going to calm you or your baby down so you know quality really does matter when it comes to essential oils now I've alluded to this already, but within the aromatherapy community, there are such varying opinions around what constitutes safe use with essential oils during pregnancy and birth um, and with babies and even during breastfeeding. Some, um, some aromatherapists 
you know, scare you and say, you know, you should always, you know, consult an aromatherapist before using essential oils during pregnancy. I, like everything, believe that you should do your own research. Buy a really good quality um, reference book that you can use as a guide um, on your journey and do your own research rather than handing your health over to someone else. And that way you can make your own decisions. Now, normally with workshops like this, this I use the word safely a lot. But when it comes to pregnancy, I'm really reluctant to use this term because nothing is 100% guaranteed. And, you know, when we are pregnant and something goes wrong, we look for answers. We look for what could have possibly been the thing that I did that made something go wrong. And usually what happens is they look at things like essential oils. And the last thing we wanna do is be recommending an essential oil to our friend or our sister or our neighbor or someone that we know, and then something happens to them and they put the blame back on us. So. That's why I think that people need to do their own research and make the decisions for themselves rather than us recommending anything. Uh, and I guess the key point to remember is that we are all humans and our body is able to, uh, I guess, um, metabolize and excrete uh, essential oils and chemicals and all that kind of stuff at a different rate. So. Uh, I know I got this saying from Dr. Dan Purser, but it's a saying that I've used for years, which is that we're all snowflakes. So just because I might have used a certain essential oil and had no reaction, that doesn't mean that someone out there isn't going to have a different reaction to exactly the same essential oil used in the same way. So you've got to make sure that you patch test, that you, you know, you have an understanding of what else you've done in your life? Um, you know, have you just had immunizations? Have you just been sick? Have you, you know, are you particularly sensitive? Had you, have you had exposure to a lot of chemicals over time? And if the answer to any of those questions is yes, then you're probably more likely going to have a reaction to essential oils um, than someone like me who hasn't had those things happen. All right, I just want to cover off on some um, things that I see on the internet. So one of them is that you should avoid lavender oil during pregnancy. So I went into Google and I put in, you know, avoid lavender during pregnancy. And these are the kinds of hits that you get. And this is why it's so confusing to mums because, you know, it scares us. We don't want to do anything that's going to harm our baby, um, especially our unborn baby. So you see things like avoid high doses of lavender oil during pregnancy because it's a uterine um, stimulant. Now, that gets over a million hits, but none of those actually tell you what constitutes a high dose. And often when you actually go into the website, they can't even quote the research that was done or where they found that information. They've just copied it off another website, which has copied it off another website, which has copied it, copied it, copied it. And so that's how you get all of these hits is because people are quoting this stuff, but they haven't actually got the scientific data or the research to back it up. Same goes for the next three that we can see 31,000 hits on two of them and 241,000 hits on lavender should be avoided during the first trimester. But a great guy to follow um, is Robert Tisserand and he's actually examined all the previous research on you know all of these claims and basically he's concluded that although proving safety in pregnancy is always a challenge we can't ethically go and test on pregnant women Women can actually volunteer to be part of studies and things like that, but in general, it's really hard to do studies on the effects of essential oils during pregnancy because you wouldn't want anything to go wrong. So there's a huge ethical dilemma there. Um, but according to Robert Tisserand, all the indications that using lavender oil during pregnancy is that it's completely safe to use. Another common misnomer or myth on the internet is to avoid peppermint oil. Once again, the claims are that it can promote premature birth, that it decreases your milk supply, and actually neither of these are founded in any science, okay? The Iranian Journal of Pharmaceutical Research actually says that it's not been, there's no reported data about the toxic effects using peppermint oil during pregnancy or during breastfeeding. And, um, there's an educational website called Medline Plus, and they basically say the use of peppermint oil for pregnancy and breastfeeding is considered likely to be safe, okay? Now, as I said before, I don't like to use the word safe. I'm using in both um, 
peppermint oil and lavender, I'm using quotes from other people. Um, but in general, the thing about peppermint oil is if you do, you know, a massage of peppermint oil or something like that, on your belly then you will find that your baby because it has that cooling sensation will actually move away from the cooling sensation they don't want to be near this cool sensation from peppermint oil so of course they're going to move away from it and that's often why um you know a lot of uh, women avoid peppermint oil, uh, particularly in massage, because they find that their baby might turn. And especially in the later stages of pregnancy, the last thing you want is for your baby to be turning around. Uh, another oil that people are told to avoid during pregnancy is clary sage. Once again, there's no scientific research to actually substantiate this. I was talking to my niece the other day, uh, my cousin's daughter, and she was telling me that she wanted to take clary sage in a diffuser into the labour ward and that her hospital actually has a policy that they can't do that because midwives who may be pregnant may then be exposed to clary sage oil. However, once again, this is a myth and not substantiated by any solid scientific research. I love this book. I mean, I have a whole heap of books, but um, the basically this is Shirley Price and Len Price. They're aromatherapy for health professionals. And in their book, they actually say that essential oils in the extremely low dosage that aromatherapy offers could in no way induce um, birth and that they simply encourage Basically what essential oils do is that they simply encourage the mother's body to do its own work more efficiently. So there are obviously, I mean, those three I've just covered off, uh, you know, what I deem myths, um, but these are some oils that you should avoid during pregnancy, labor and breastfeeding. So aniseed is one, that's licorice smelling oil, Basil, I often see on the internet and particularly on Pinterest and sites like that. I mean, Pinterest is great to go and look for recipes for making face masks and all of that kind of stuff, but you don't want to be basing your birth plan decisions on things you've found on Pinterest. And um, I often see with basil oil, it's, it's suggested for women, um, breastfeeding women. And I say, mm, yeah, I'd probably do a little bit more research when it comes to that. Birch, camphor is another one, um, hyssop, mugwort, parsley seed, pennyroyal, sage, tansy, not blue tansy, but Idaho tansy, tarragon, thuja, wintergreen. I just want to cover off on wintergreen. Wintergreen, um, basically the main constituent in wintergreen is methyl salicylate. And this is another thing that I see often on you know, girls posting about their pregnancy and their labour on Instagram or Facebook, they often say that they use wintergreen or they use essential oil blends that contain wintergreen. So I want you to think about what blends that Young Living has that actually contain wintergreen. Because what wintergreen does with the methyl salicylate is it's like taking aspirin and because it thins the blood. So that's why we don't want to use it during pregnancy because we don't want to... You know, we don't want to be thinning the blood of ourselves or our babies by um, by using wintergreen. Now, they they really can't conclusively say the effect of a mother using essential oils and whether it crosses to the baby. But we know that chemicals and all kinds of things cross the placenta and get to the baby. So the last thing we want to be doing is risking our baby getting huge doses of wintergreen oil. So um, as a general rule, I tend to encourage mums to choose other oils uh, rather than some of the blends that we have that contain wintergreen. And the other one's wormwood. Now, I just want to say that in general um, the the thing about using and this once again is information from Tisserand uh, that it becomes such a contentious issue but there's actually been no um, no proven sort of studies or um, you know or cases I guess of women using essential oils safely that um, have actually impacted on um, an unborn baby. The cases that have been reported have actually been where women have used large doses of essential oils. So not, you know, your regular use of um, diffusing or your regular use of applying them topically. I'm talking about where women have, you know, 
intentionally use large amounts of things like penny royal, mugwort, wormwood. They have intentionally used those large doses, and that's where um, you know the cases that have been reported um, of you know dangerous things happening. They're from using those particular oils. Oh, and that's actually that list I just want to say is from NAHA. NAHA is the National Association um, of Aromatherapy and it's an American organisation, but they have heaps of great resources on their website about essential oils to avoid during pregnancy and um, if you want to know more information about that. Now, most of us think of three ways to use essential oils and there are three. However, when it comes to being pregnant and using essential oils during pregnancy, I, I actually only suggest the two ways of using essential oils, which is actually inhalation, so you know, diffusing essential oils, um, or by using them topically. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about dilution in a minute. But um, as a general rule, I don't um, suggest women use essential oils in supplements or um, you know, or large doses in food and things like that while they're pregnant, because it gets back to that idea before that um, you know we just can't take the risk of um, you know something happening to someone else's baby so as a general rule I don't recommend it, it you know what people do themselves um, that's up to them but I tend to say that uh, when you are pregnant just using essential oils diffusing them or using them topically is the best alternatives so some safety considerations the first thing is quality. I touched on quality before when we talked when I talked about how essential oils are made, but the safety during pregnancy is even more important. So it comes down to the quality of the essential oil that you choose. Many essential oil companies actually, you know, they're not worried about um, the quality of their essential oils. They just want them to smell nice because, you know, a huge market. Um, for essential oils is actually to go just into products to make them smell nice or to go into candles or to make them for perfumes and things like that. People aren't actually, you know, interested in the therapeutic benefits. But if you want to um, use essential oils during pregnancy, then you're going to want to choose what I call the Rolls Royce. So there's kind of like the Hyundai version and then there's the Rolls Royce. And when I was pregnant, I wanted the Rolls Royce of everything. I stopped dyeing my hair. I talked about all the, you know, throwing out all the chemicals in my home. The last thing I wanted to be putting on myself and my baby was a poor quality product. And I wanted to know that there was no chemicals at all in the whole process from the soil that the essential oils were grown in to the sprays that were sprayed on the plants. I wanted to make sure that they were um, distilled for the right amount of time. And I wanted to make sure that they were tested and tested properly. Um, you know, that's what I love about Young Living. They test it 45 times before, 45 times after. You know, they have third party testing on, you know, if they need to, all of this kind of stuff um, to make sure that we're getting the, the highest quality essential oils. Now, the next thing is chemical components and certain essential oils are actually contraindicated due to the nature of the chemical components. So, you know, for someone who is pregnant, we're probably going to want to avoid things like, um, I mentioned before, the methyl salicylate that's in wintergreen. Um, but there's even some chemical constituents that we want to avoid for other things. So if you, when you're pregnant, have high blood pressure or, um, you know, um, you have epilepsy or anything like that, then you, you know, whatever the contraindication for your particular condition, you're going to want to avoid those um, essential oils during pregnancy as well. You know, so grapefruit oil, uh, wintergreen, uh, you know, any of your high phenol oils, so your clove, your oregano, all of those kinds of things, you just need to be more cautious during pregnancy. I've talked before about the oils being able to cross the placental barrier. Um, and I guess, well, during pregnancy, uh, you want to make sure that you're diluting more. So, you know, every day, you like before you got pregnant, you might have used essential oils and you might have used them whether you use them neat, so not diluted at all, or whether you diluted them, you know, one or two drops in a teaspoon of carrier oil. When you're pregnant, you should actually consider diluting them a lot more. And this is because they do cross to the placenta, they cross the placenta and get to the baby. But it's also because of the next dot point, which is hyposome, hypothyroidism 
furose Oh, whatever it is. It basically means that your sense of smell is stronger when you're pregnant and therefore it can make you more nauseous. So if you're really? inhaling um, essential oils during pregnancy, just got to mute Kylie. <laughs> um, you can, you know, you smell the essential oil during pregnancy and it actually can make you feel nauseous and even more sick. So by diluting the essential oil further, um, it can help reduce um, your reaction, I guess. The other thing is obviously photosensitivity. That's not just specifically to being pregnant, um, but you want to make sure that you know you're not putting on lemon oil or like a lot of us use tangerine oil on our legs and our belly during pregnancy, and we want to make sure that we're not going to then wear a bikini and go outside in the sun because you will get those pigmentations happening on your skin if you do that. Um, often women find that their skin is far more sensitive during pregnancy, and um, and that's another reason for diluting your essential oils a bit, you know, like you, as I say, as a general, I tend to encourage people to double what they would have diluted it before they were pregnant. Um, and as always, you know, it really comes down to your medical history. And if you, um, you know, have high blood pressure, if you have a history of being sensitive to particular uh, chemicals or particular medications or particular um, anything on your skin, all of that kind of stuff, then you are more likely to be sensitive to essential oils. If you've got a history of high blood pressure, epilepsy, if you've got a history of, you know, if you've just been immunized, if you've just been unwell, all of those kinds of things will come into how essential oils actually impact and affect you while you're pregnant. So, I've talked about the scary stuff. Now let's talk about some of the I guess, oils that you can use. So we've talked about things that you can't do, but there are a lot of oils that you can use. So some of my favourites are geranium, lavender, lemon, tea tree. Oh, actually, I've got tea tree on there twice, I just realised, because I've got it down further as melaleuca alternifolia. Uh, tangerine, grapefruit, although, as I mentioned before, grapefruit is contraindicated um, for people with on certain types of medication. So if your medication does say that you can't take grapefruit, you can't eat grapefruit, then I generally suggest that people avoid the oil. Oh, I've just realised some of them doubled up. Um, lemon, orange, rose, frankincense, marjoram, cedarwood, jasmine, sandalwood, thyme and ginger. They're all um, essential oils that most um, aromatherapists will be on the um, low risk. So... I said before I don't like to use the word safe, so I tend to use the word low risk, and these are the low risk oils for pregnancy. Um, and as a general rule, I tend to encourage women to use oils when they need them. So, you know, if you're having difficulty um, relaxing at night and getting to sleep, then, you know, popping some lavender oil or geranium. If you're having, you know, particular issues, then look at using essential oils to support your emotions and your physical health. But if you don't need them, um, then, you know, it's a good time to um, use either less or not use them at all. All right, what about labour? I couldn't have imagined my, um, you know, even just for my sense of peace of mind, basically, um, I wanted to have my little first aid kit of essential oils. And as I said, my first baby, I had her in 10 minutes. I didn't even open a bottle of essential oil, but I'd ordered them all and I had them there on hand so that I, you know, knew I could use them if I needed to. And the ones that I, um, you know, often women message me and say, oh, what should I take in my pregnancy bag? What should I take up to the hospital uh, with my diffuser? And I say, clary sage, frankincense, lavender lemon and I love young living's blend stress away it's an amazing amazing blend um, you know uh, there's a lot of stress that comes with um, labor and giving birth and just by being able to calm everybody in the room not just the you but often your partner your mother or your mother-in-law or whoever else is in the room it's really stress away is a great blend of vanilla lime lavender copaiba it just calms the whole situation down so having those five oils uh, whether you diffuse them whether you turn them into a massage oil um, the reason i pop frankincense there was uh, one of the things that I learned from Gary Young was when he 
uh, well, he didn't give birth, but when Mary <laughs> gave birth to Joseph, their youngest son, they actually anointed him with frankincense when he came out. And I loved that idea. So in addition to, um, you know, helping with anyone who's feeling a little bit anxious about their birth, that's what frankincense is great for. It's also great for, you know, if you want to anoint your baby as soon as they're born. So that's just another lovely little thing that you can do. Lavender for relaxation. Um, lemon. Some women find that clary sage and lavender they don't like the smell of. I mentioned before that your sense of smell is actually really heightened when you're pregnant. Um, and so, you know, if you find when you're actually in the labour ward or whether you're having your home birth or whatever, um, that you don't like the smell of clary sage and lavender, then it's always good to have something like lemon on hand, which is more refreshing. Um, and you can use that instead. All right, what about breastfeeding? So there are oils that can, you know, obviously reduce the worry and overwhelming feel feelings that come when breastfeeding. So some of the oils that I love for breastfeeding are lavender, Roman chamomile, Young Living has a blend called Peace and Calming, fennel, I absolutely love fennel, um, and your citrus oils are all really good for raising a mum's spirits. Now, I am... Um, I often make women up a breast massage oil and um, and they, you know, because particularly when, you know, you first, your milk first comes in, your breast can be really quite engorged and, um, you know, so making up a massage oil is quite good. Uh, you can even massage your breast before uh, the baby comes along and you can use the oil for that as well. So, you know, using these essential oils in breast massage oils. The other thing is that... Um, even if you don't want to massage the essential oils directly onto your breasts, just wearing them as a perfume behind your ears, it's a great way to act as a human diffuser for your baby and so that your baby can actually get used to the essential oils. And if you've got difficulty, you know, calming your baby down and getting them to go to sleep, then actually you being the human diffuser and wearing the lavender oil and Roman chamomile is a great way to get baby to calm down. All right, some essential oils to help both baby and mum have a relaxing night. Um, you know, we all want to get as much sleep as we can. So lavender, Roman chamomile, vetiver. Vetiver is quite a thick oil, um, so I love to mix it with lavender and Roman chamomile. Once again, the peace and calming blend. Kylie's going to talk in a minute about the gentle baby blend. But I also love the tranquil roll-on. So once again, when babies are young, I tend to recommend the mum being the human diffuser or diffusing them uh, in a diffuser, which I'm going to talk about in a minute as well, um, rather than putting them on the baby itself, um, particularly under three months. Under three months, I don't tend to like to put anything on um, a baby's skin. Here's some diffuser blends. So you'll notice that I've only got two drops, okay? I'm a big believer in... Um, in diffusing, but I tend to like to diffuse um, and keep the diffuser on the other side of the room from the baby, not above the baby's cot so that the essential oil is going all over the baby. Remember that when you um, give birth to the baby that, you know, our baby's lungs are still developing. And so, you know, we want to make sure that um, we're not giving them too heavy a dose of essential oils. So one drop lavender, one drop cedar wood, you know, one drop frankincense, one drop lemon, that kind of stuff. Um, that, you know, they're my options for under three months. When it comes to applying essential oils topically, I, um, you know, I'm a big believer in heavy dilution for babies and children. And that doesn't mean that I, you know, I have used essential oils neat on my own children, but I did my research and I made decisions based on my own children. But what I see is mums jumping into Facebook groups and jumping onto Instagram and recommending people slather their baby, you know, their teething baby in clove oil or their, um, you know, baby some you know whatever it is um oh i put an oils neat on my baby and i and my baby was fine and that might be true um and for 99 percent of us that probably is true but there's always that one percent baby out there who's going to have a reaction and um kylie and i were actually talking the other day about dr peter minky and when he came out to australia and he was talking about um how you know for babies under well 
basically under three, we shouldn't be using eucalyptus and peppermint because it can actually cause respiratory issues. And he was talking about, you know, that he had that happen to his own child. And, you know, it's quite scary if your child goes into respiratory distress and, and they had to put the child into the um, hot steamy shower to actually help them get breathing again. And, um, and once again, they were a healthy essential oil using family and their child still had a reaction to, I think it was the peppermint oil. And, um, and you know, that the last thing we want to do is have our friend's child that we've recommended essential oils to for something to happen to their baby. And so I guess um, in terms of this particular diagram, with naught to three months, as I said before, I tend to, unless a baby actually needs essential oils, and I don't think any baby is deficient in essential oils, um, but if they have a particular issue, like they're not sleeping or they have a particular health challenge that you want to try and use essential oils for, then one to two drops in 50 mils. Now, 50 mils is a lot of a, a carrier oil, so whether you use um, jojoba. With babies, I, I tend to like to use things like a jojoba because you don't know at that age whether they've got a nut allergy. So I do tend to steer away from the nut and seed oils and more towards jojoba. Um, so one to two oils, you'll notice that it graduates, two to five, 10 to 15, 15 to 30. So if the child, you know, has had um, a recent illness or has been immunised or, you know, has sensitive skin or you think that the child has been exposed to a lot of chemicals, whether it's chemical cleaning products or medications, then err on the lower side um, rather than the higher side, I guess. And, you know, always read the label. That's a big thing. I have a lot of people who think that these are natural, healthy products, which they are, but you always have to read the label and the label will tell you whether it needs to be diluted and how heavily diluted and, you know, who should seek medical advice, all of that kind of stuff. So make sure you read the label before you use essential oils. Some general safety guidelines I have just covered off on the always reading the label. Um, dilute, 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 I've just talked about that. Um, essential oils are strong and ingestion, which includes using them in food or drinks, is never actually recommended during, like for pregnant women, babies or for toddlers. Pregnant women are, and babies are far more sensitive, so diffuse less drops than you typically would. Um, with every new essential oil, always dilute heavily and spot test for a reaction because you don't know, like you might have used heaps of other oils and I've seen this happen. Like I've seen people who've used oils for years and suddenly they get a new essential oil and they try it out and they use it how they would use anything else. Maybe they've just put a roller on and rolled it all over them and, um, and they've had a reaction. Um, so always uh, spot test particularly on children. Uh, avoid adding essential oils neat to baby's baths um, because babies are likely to put their, you know, splash water in their eyes or go under the bath or things like that and it gets in their eyes and can actually irritate their mucous membranes. Um, and, you know, it's particularly, you know, with babies, if you're putting essential oils in their bath, they end up as big globules. So you need to actually... Um, add it to something like a, uh, either a bath gel or something like that so that it actually distributes the essential oil throughout the whole bath rather than water and oil don't mix. So the essential oils tend to sit on the top of the bath water. And the last thing we want to do is we might be like, you know, a couple of 30 centimetres, 50 centimetres or whatever above our bath water, but our babies are so much littler that their heads and their um, noses are a lot closer to the bath water and they're likely to breathe in those big amounts of essential oils that are just floating on the top of the bath water. So always use something like a bath gel to actually distribute the essential oil and simply wearing essential oils will actually help babies and toddlers get used to them. Um, so be those human diffusers, start out by doing that and then you can gradually increase and use essential oils more with your babies and toddlers. I mean my girls are totally oily babies um, they, you know, they could probably teach an introduction to essential oils class because we've used so many essential oils over the years. But I know that they haven't, um, you know, been exposed to nasty chemicals or anything like that. And I've touched on this before. Essential oils for babies should be used minimally and only if needed in those first three months. That's my friend Sarah's baby, Riley. Riley's now at school, so... Um, some essential oils to avoid for babies, Idaho tansy, they're the similar ones to avoiding during pregnancy and uh, 
breastfeeding. So your Idaho tansy, which isn't your blue tansy, it's not the blue tansy that's found in our beautiful Valor or Peace and Calming, it's Idaho tansy. Hyssop, um, hyssop's a really, really strong oil for lungs and it's another one like your eucalyptus and peppermint that can actually cause respiratory distress. Um, and hyssop is also contraindicated for epilepsy. So in general, we tend to avoid hyssop with babies and also during pregnancy. Sage and clary sage we avoid with babies. Wintergreen I've talked about because of that methyl salicylate and I've talked about peppermint and eucalyptus. And just remember to look at your blends as well. You know, the Young Living has a lot of blends that contain wintergreen has a lot of blends that contain peppermint and a lot of blends that contain eucalyptus so you know when I say that you need to avoid these essential oils make sure that you're looking at the blends as well all right um, some low risk so what can you use bergamot cedarwood roman chamomile cypress frankincense geranium ginger lavender lemon marjoram tea tree orange rose sandalwood and ylang-ylang um, you know I tend to um, encourage people to like look at a few different lists. Um, what happens is people go on the internet and say, oh, you know, this list says that I can use cedarwood and this list says that you can't. Look at a few different lists before you make up your mind um, because not everyone agrees on some of this stuff. So these are the essential oils that most aromatherapists agree are low risk, as I say. Nothing is 100% safe, so you need to do your own research and make your own decisions. But these are your low risk essential oils for use with babies and toddlers. Oh, I just went too far. And by low risk, I mean, uh, sorry, by babies and toddlers, I mean up until the age of three. Over three, then you can start and introduce um, other essential oils. Um, you know, it's interesting, Robert Tisserand, he, um, he used to err on the side of caution and um, as far as eucalyptus and, uh, and peppermint. I think he's now saying uh, those oils over the age of five, but I've even seen some people say those oils over the age of eight. Um, every aromatherapy book that I've got actually says three. So once again, do your own research and, um, and make decisions about your baby and your child. All right, that's enough from me. I'm gonna hand over to the beautiful Kylie. And um, Kylie's gonna talk about some other products that you can um, use with your, well, during la pregnancy, labor, and with your babies. So take it away, Kylie. Thanks, Kim. Yes, um, we are very fortunate that a lot of range has um, come into Australian New Zealand market in the last couple of years, making it much easier and simpler for mums. Um, I love that book too, Kim, the um, one with Shirley Price and Len Price. It's my go-to. You can see all the dog ears on it. So, great book. Um, funny you're talking about being a human diffuser. I think um, it's such a wonderful thing to be able to do. And when you were talking about stress away and that, I remember a class that we had um, with Fiona and a lady came along and she got a phone call from her very distressed husband that the baby wasn't settling and she had to come back. So she, we'd only just started our class and we talked about stress away and we'd handed it around and she'd put it on her wrists. She rushed home and the minute she held the baby, it drifted off to sleep. She was so excited that she had to come back to the class <laughs> and tell us that it was just, it was incredible. She couldn't believe how fast and she was just being a human diffuser and I think you know, that's, um, it's such a wonderful, beautiful, safe way. And I, there's a couple of oils here. Feathers, can you see feathers in the screen here? Feathers the diffuser. I know it's on the slide, but also I've got feathers here. Feathers is an amazing diffuser. I love it. We take it on holidays because it's so robust, but I love all the white noise. So I can wake up to waves crashing or um, birds chirping, which sends my cats crazy, by the way. So probably not the best one for my home is the birds chirping. But lovely white noise, which is wonderful for helping bubs drift off to sleep, um, which is great. Um, also, it can go intermittently for 10 hours. Now, I was a croup baby, so I grew up with a steam diffuser with probably really crappy eucalyptus oil, which... Um, yeah, and I remember the steam dripping off the walls and, and buying one of them for my own daughter, Matilda, because um, we were all croup babies. Um, and now, you know, do better, know better. I love that these are cold air diffusers and um, there is only a beautiful mist that comes out, not a steam that's going to cause, um, you know, that 
that, uh, that dripping down your windows and off your ceiling and, and obviously there could be some mold issues with that as well. So great diffusers. Also, there's no hot water. So if you've got older children around that are gonna knock it over, um, there's no risk of burn and basically it just switches itself off. So a great diffuser really um, for any age, as I said, we've no babies in our home and we love feathers. But there's a couple of oils here that I'm gonna quickly talk about first. Gentle Baby and um, seedlings. Now I love Gentle Baby, I carry it with me on planes um, in case I have an upset baby around me and I can be a human diffuser. Absolutely love this one. Um, and my friend Megan explains it as being like a hug in a bottle. So if you've been in isolation, you're missing some hugs at the moment, um, Gentle Baby is such a beautiful one. And I'm sure many of you, and it doesn't take much to Google or have a look, and you'll see some wonderful videos of just waving a, um, a Gentle Baby bottle in the vicinity of a baby and watching it just calm down very, very quickly. And I love the oils in that. But we have the whole seedlings range of products. We can go to the next slide. Um, the whole seedlings range of um, beautiful, oh, sorry, can we skip a slide and go back? Yeah, okay. <laughs> no. Anyway, it uh, doesn't matter. The whole seedlings range, it's a beautiful range of um, products that I love. There's no babies in our house, but we use it. And I'll go through all of those, but all of them have this seedlings calm blend of oils in it. Now, this has got lavender. It's got um, coriander, bergamot. Now this is the bergamot that's not photosensitive. So you don't have to worry about sun exposure. Not that you've got to have your baby out in the sun for a long period of time. Um, and it's lang lang and geranium. So the most beautiful oils, very, very gentle and recommended for babies are in the seedlings calm blend, but they also in every single one of the seedlings products that I'll run through, um, which is great. So the gentle baby has got all of those oils as well, but it also has in it Palmer Rosa, um, Jasmine and Rose. So that's probably why it feels like a big, big hug because we've got those lovely, anything with Rose in it is absolutely beautiful. So Gentle Baby is a wonderful one that I love to use um, myself and lots of products, but the seedlings come, such a wonderful one to put in your diffuser for bub. Um, and then we've got the whole Kid Sense. So the Kid Sense range, so that's, We've got actually five, there's four showing on there now, but we've added a fifth one, which is fantastic. So these are ideal for children to use up to the age of um, three. And so we have in there a tummy gyes. Now I love tummy gyes. I am not a huge fan of the smell of diages. So if my tummy is feeling a little unhappy, I love to use tummy gyes. Now what I love about these Kids Sense range, it takes that fear out of using oils with children. Because when you're new, when I was brand new, I was really quite nervous. I was a nervous mum when my babies come about of things that I would use, but um, especially of what can I use? What can I use? Is that blend okay? The beautiful thing about having baby range and a kid's range is that it takes that guesswork out. We don't have to have the knowledge of Kim, um, which is absolutely awesome by the way. And But we've got those wonderful resources, but knowing that we've got these blends that are already formulated for that age group is absolutely brilliant. So tummy gyes, really wonderful for unhappy tummies or you know, for a massage. I had, um, with my first bub, um, Matilda, I had a lot of trouble breastfeeding and she was um, supplemented with formula, which unfortunately made her a very constipated little baby. And so uh, doing a little tummy massage was wonderful. I only wish that I had some tummy gyes back then. That would have been wonderful. Um, refresh. Now, Refresh, we've got different names in the US to here in Australia. And um, so I probably can't tell you, well, maybe, can I say what it's called in America? Kim, do you think? Uh, no, but I actually tell people that because we can't use RC uh, with yes. babies, it's go. like Thank our you. one of RC for babies. Exactly. So if you want happy breathing, happy, happy relaxed breathing, um, Refresh is a wonderful blend there, uh, which is great to put in the diffuser or be a human diffuser as well. Um, we've also got the Genius. Now, Genius um, Brain Power is an oil that is used heavily in our home, um, especially at the moment with exams going. But it is quite an expensive oil. But I love now there's a kid's one, Genius. And so Genius is great for helping children with their focus, um, which if any of you are homeschooling at the moment, um, or the kids, I think most of the kids are back to school, uh, but it's a wonderful blend um, to help with focus and study and homework, things like that. 
Our kids care is a great one to have on hand. I used to, you know, um, I had, I was a clumsy child. Um, my kids were a little bit, well, they were a bit more daring than me, um, always climbing and things like that. So kids care is a wonderful little one to have on hand. I actually make up a little spray with that so I could just spray it on their skin if they've had any oopsies. Um, you know, it's like a kiss at better oil. <laughs> How's that for compliance? <laughs> and, um, and now the one that's not in the picture, is Sleepy Eyes and I love Sleepy Eyes. It is a beautiful smelling oil and we've even put it in our diffuser at bedtime as well. So another one for the kids is Sleepy Eyes and it smells amazing. So if we can um, skip to the next um, slide, we've got, we, yeah, yes, so chemicals to avoid. Now this is a big one. It was when Melissa Pepping came to Australia and did a tour and she started talking about what was in our products and we're becoming more aware of the words like fragrance i was already on the you know no parabens no phthalates not realizing that the words fragrance also contained phthalates and they could get around it that way um with your pegs your slss's um all our, our DAs and our teas formaldehyde now when my children were babies i can't believe huggies wipes and I used to use the Huggies wipes back then they used to use formaldehyde in it I was horrified really pleased to learn that they removed the formaldehyde but they added another preservative which is an irritant to a lot of people so if you look on the I like the Think Dirty app and the Chemical Maze um, Kim I know you like the Ingrid um, there's also the um, oh there's there's quite a few wonderful apps and you can look at these ingredients I wish I had in those times been a little bit more aware we're all hearing about triclosan. Um, it's still in so many products in Australia, even though it's banned elsewhere. Talc, talc is uh, one of those ones I think we're all well and truly aware of. Talc is not a good thing. And as a baby, I remember, you know, my mum used it. Um, you know, I used it with my kids. I didn't know any different. That pume of um, talc that we're not only inhaling, terrible for our, our little tiny developing lungs, but also um, not very good for our privates or anything like that. Um, alcohol, I, alcohol is incredibly drying for skin. We don't really want to use products with alcohol. With baby's skin, the epidermis is actually five times thinner than um, a, an adult skin. So they're, um, they actually absorb anything put on their skin into their bloodstream so much faster than we do. And they actually have more skin per body weight up to three to five times than an adult. So whatever we're putting on that bub skin, they're going to be absorbing so much more of it than we are as adults. So what we use on them is so much more important. And Kim, I, you and I were talking about this the other day, Dr. Dan Purser, when he came and toured, and it, it will be on one of the videos that we shared the other day, that he was talking about if he had all the money in the world, he would um, sue all the nappy rash companies, um, nappy rash cream companies. And I remember him saying that and my little girls, um, we used to go for a lot of that stuff and I went back and took a, a screenshot of the ingredients off the back of that brand I used to buy from the pharmacy and I was absolutely horrified of what I was putting onto my children's skin and it was going into their bloodstream. So, you know, we've had, we have to forgive ourselves because we didn't know any better at that stage, but I'm so glad that I've introduced new products into our bubs. Um, into our children's life now. So synthetic fragrances, that's um, one that we talk about all the time. And what I love about Young Living is that we don't need to use synthetic fragrances because we're an essential oils company. So for a lot of people that are new to this and they haven't used oils before, it's, um, and I think, well, maybe I don't really, you know, maybe they're not into diffusing or anything yet because they haven't tried it, but it's actually the absence of all those other um, fragrances in those products that you're using currently. Now, if you go down the supermarket shelves and you go looking in the, the shampoo or the conditioner aisle or the bubble bath aisle or any of those sort of products, you will find it very, very hard to find something without fragrance or perfume. Now, if it's a cheap product that says it uses some, some plant essences or essential oils, um, how was it produced? How was it manufactured? A lot of these essential oils actually made in a lab and not growing out in a field as well so you know you don't as kim was touching on before oils aren't oils and knowing the quality is really important as well so synthetic um colors um as well they should need to be avoided too 
So our beautiful seedlings range, I love this. Um, I reorder these products all the time because they are so awesome. You do not need a baby, but I'm going to um, explain to you why. The, the diaper cream, for, for instance, I love that diaper cream. Um, it's a wonderful barrier cream because it's zinc based. It's the only one that's not vegan friendly, by the way. The rest of them, it is veg, um, all plant based, but um, uh, the rest of the range is completely vegan. So this has got some beeswax in it. So the um, diaper cream is actually non-nanoparticle zinc. So that means that it's not going to um, be absorbed into the skin. It works as a beautiful barrier. And the oils that are in that seedlings calm blend that I was talking about, lavender, coriander, bergamot, lang lang, and geranium are all in that diaper cream. So it's so beautiful. It's really soothing. And I know a lot of people that have unhappy skin of all ages have found this to be an absolutely amazing. And pets, great for pets as well. So the diaper cream is a wonderful one to have. Um, and I wish I had it and not used some of those other brands that I can't talk about. The baby lotion, that is my hand cream. This lives in my, um, my handbag because it's such a beautiful hand cream. It's got calendula in it, calendula flowers. It's so soothing for skin. It's absolutely beautiful. And as we were saying, this baby skin is so much thinner. Whatever you're going to be using on that, you want to make sure that it's, um, it's really good quality. And it's very, very safe. And it's going to be nice and gentle for them as well. So the Seedlings um, Baby Lotion, also really wonderful for anybody who has skin that's sometimes not very happy, no matter what age you are. The um, lovely linen spray, that's a beautiful room spray to spritz around before bedtime. Maybe if you're traveling um, or just you want to spritz the sheets or, or anything in the bub's room, even their, their toys, if you, they've got any cuddle toys, it's a really lovely one because it is so mild, so gentle, and it has those beautiful oils in it too, uh, which is great. Um, the baby oil is my favorite. Many of you um, that know me know that this is the one that I use as my carrier oil in my face serums. So if you are making a rollerball for a baby, um, as Kim says, you want to avoid nut oils. Um, and I don't really like heavy oils that are very um, thick and, and don't absorb very well. What I love about this one is that it goes on and um, it's non-greasy. So it's a beautiful carrier oil. I don't like to have like that greasy feel on my skin. Um, and so I love it for myself. But for babies, it's amazing. It actually has in it um, apricot kernel oil. It's got prickly pear oil. Um, and they are very high concentrates of linoleic acid, which is one of the three essential fatty acids. So very close to what, you know, bub skin will have, and it's so gentle, so lovely, and um, it's not going to leave bubby or greasy either. It absorbs nice and quickly. So that is an absolute gorgeous one. And best of all, have any... Sorry. And best of oil, it doesn't have any mineral oil in it. Like mineral yes. oil is basically petroleum based and so many people buy baby oil that contains mineral oil. Oh, I know. Hey, Kim, I used to try and get a tan and slather my body in it and sit out in the sun. You know, that's what we did at our 1970 babies. Um, we used to think baby oil and, and that we're, we're totally cool to use, not realising, you know, that we're... It is petroleum, which is horrible. Um, the baby wash and shampoo... I even use this one myself as well as a all purpose when I travel, if I've got my baby, my seedlings kit with me. Wonderful for baby wash and shampoo because it's got none of those ingredients that we want to avoid. And it's already got those lovely essential oils in it in a mild form that is perfect for bub skin or for, you know, for hair or shampoo. So it doesn't matter what age you are, which is great. And the last one in that kit is our baby wipes. And baby wipes are fantastic i use them as makeup removers and i'll tell you your skin feels incredible um it doesn't have any of those nasties that i was talking about before um it's great i use them as dry sheets as well i love my towels to be nice and fluffy so they do go through the dryer and one of those baby wipes in there just makes everything smell beautiful and everything comes out nice and soft and fluffy too. So those baby wipes are so gorgeous. They leave your skin feeling amazing. And when my girls go on school camp and um, school camp's 10 days, no showers, they take packets of that that they carry around in their backpacks. And I can say that when I picked up my daughter, I didn't have to drive with the windows down. She actually didn't smell like somebody who hadn't had a shower for 10 days and been in the bush. So, um, I don't care what age you are, they are absolutely amazing. And I know that a lot of us love them for our skincare and makeup um, bag as well. So they are absolutely gorgeous. So um, 
if you are new, somebody's in, uh, introduced you um, to watch this today and you haven't started with Young Living at this point in time, the starter kit is always, all the starter kits are always the best way to get started because they are over 50% off. And all of those oils in there, there's 12 beautiful oils. And as Kim was saying, really during for babies um, or for pregnancies, the ones that you want to avoid in that kit is just the one. The Panaway has got the wintergreen in it, um, but um, the rest of them are all 100%, you know, beautiful oils that you, you'd be happy to use. And the ones for the babies um, that you want to is your peppermint and the RC, which we were talking about with Dr. Peter Minky was talking about for underdeveloped lungs and that 0.05% can actually cause them to have a little breathing distress. So, um, you know, but for the rest of the family, they are oils that you really want to have in your tool belt of um, health really it's part of my tool well every single day so and a diffuser we all need a diffuser it's absolutely incredible so once you have any of those kits you then have a wholesale membership and you get 24 percent off and then you can buy one of these beautiful seedlings bundles or any of the seedlings oils um the kid scents that we've got the lotion the shampoo and the, the gel um or even a feathers diffuser you can get all of those but, but with the young living at the moment we actually have a customized enrollment um, order so you can actually start with anything you like to the value of 100 PV so you can get a feathers diffuser and some oils or maybe some diaper cream and some wipes or or something like that so the person that introduced you um, or asked you to watch this um, please go back to them and work out which is the best way for you to get started um, yeah so thank you so so much for listening I know there was uh, so much more information that we'd love to share but we want to keep it short and sweet as much as possible uh, but don't be scared to use these on your oil, uh, on your children and your family. Um, I wish I'd known this earlier. I look back at the things I've used and these are absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Kim, for sharing all of your extensive knowledge of bubs and pregnancy um, and oils. It's absolutely awesome. Thank oh, look, you. I am so passionate about natural childbirth and breastfeeding. You know, I have to come down off my soapbox sometimes. <laughs> Uh, um, you know, they are a beautiful, beautiful gift. Um, if you know anyone who's pregnant, I know someone just commented and said that they're their go-to gift as a baby shower gift. And I, I think that as well, that seedlings range is amazing. Um, but I guess um, the other thing is, as a special gift to those of you who register for today's workshop, Kylie has some um, gorgeous uh diy recipes so maybe you're a diyer and um we're going to email those out to you as an added benefit for registering for today's workshop so um thank you kylie for um for those recipes uh and um if you don't like diying then obviously the seedlings range and the uh kid scents and all of those kinds of things are um are products that you'll love so um, as I say, do your own research. Essential oils are an awesome, awesome addition to your birth plan and, you know, and to looking after your kids naturally. Um, but you just need to be a little bit cautious. And as I say, um, buy a good research book. Don't just trust what you read on Pinterest or Instagram. Yeah. Um, because, you know, just because someone else did it doesn't mean that, um, that it's right for you or your baby. So thank you, everyone. Next weekend, oh, I'll come back to you, Kylie. But next weekend, if you're interested, we're going to cover the next age group. So we've talked about being pregnant and birth and children. Next weekend, we're going to talk about using essential oils on children. So um, if you're interested in that, jump on and register for that one. So Kylie, you were going to say something? Yeah, just quickly. I know that a few people are going to ask after listening to this because those that are particularly cautious, um, our Ningxia, because of course our Ningxia has is infused with some essential oils, but Ningxia is such a great in, um, to use during pregnancy. And I just thought people will be asking is it okay to drink ninja what do you say about that i so the the essential oils that are in ninja are ones um that you know that we would find in foods and things like that anyway and they're not highly concentrated when i talk about you know i'm talking about um supplements such as inner defense diagives longevity those kinds of ones um you know 
where it's high concentrated. But as far as Nincha, I myself, I wouldn't have been able to get out of bed some days <laughs> if it wasn't for Nincha. So, um, yeah, no, big believer in, in Nincha. Um, and I guess one of the other questions that was asked about was um, to calm down teething babies. I actually love copaiba, Roman chamomile and lavender mixed up in a... Um, in a roller bottle and uh, rolled down their uh, jawline to calm teething babies. So, you know, there's another little hint, um, I guess. Because, you know, you think about if oils are really strong, uh, like clove and things like that, if it's, um, if it's strong on you, it's going to be strong on babies as well. So, and clove is generally one to be a little bit cautious of anyway.